Hello YouTube, it's Tony. So today I'll show you the best beginner bossing unlocks and upgrades for 2021. There are so many different unlocks and upgrades for PVM, but here I'm going to show you the absolute list of most important ones to go after first. So here's the criteria on how I chose this list. The first and most important factor is affordability initially and the maintenance cost per hour. For example, don't expect like a full set of augmented tier 92s because that will definitely cost a lot per hour to use. The second criteria while it ties in with the first is I'm going to go by the best bang per buck rather than putting all eggs in one basket. You're basically looking at what are the biggest stepping stones. And finally, the last criteria is that it's suitable for the gateway between mid to high tier bossing. These bosses include God Wars Engine 1, 2, QBD, or anything below that, and maybe you might be able to do some Nex or Araxor. Here is the list of table of contents, and there is a huge list as you can see. However, even though it looks really overwhelming, you don't have to get these upgrades all at once. The most important sections are what I listed first. Oh by the way, you'll likely get bored because there's going to be a lot of text slides as I'm explaining the information. So the very first unlock is pretty much the most simple unlock on this list, and that is Ward's Retreat. If you don't know how to get there for the first time, you go north of the Draenor Lodestone, then enter this portal. You'll talk to this NPC, and then you'll see a lot of these unlocks. The very first thing you want to unlock is the Ward's Retreat Teleport, and it's really simple. You just kill 10 of any boss, even KBD or Mole, which is doable with tier 50 gear. You have no idea just how amazing this is, especially if you're a beginner because this offers you an emergency bank teleport which works in combat. You can find this teleport on your spellbook, then drag this on your action bar. At 100 boss kills, you'll unlock what is called a boss portal. What this does is that you can attune it to any boss for 50k GP, and when it's attuned, it will teleport you straight outside the boss instance. In order to attune it, you will need at least one kill of that respective boss. As you kill more bosses, you'll unlock more stuff passively, and there is a huge list, so be sure to browse on whichever one interests you. Pretty much throughout your bossing journey, you're gonna hang out at the war's retreat. Section number 2, Unlockable Abilities. I've already explained my reasoning for unlocking this in the Beginner Revolution DPS Guide, so feel free to check this out if you want. Anyways, to summarize this list, what you're going to get are A, the Corruption Abilities, B, Sunshine and Death's Witness, C, Tendril Abilities, and D, Constitution Basic Abilities. One ability I'd like to add to this list is Devotion, which is unlocked the same way as the Constitution Abilities. Basically, this threshold turns Protection Prayers to 100% for 9.6 seconds. Section number 3, Quests. Now first of all, I do understand that a lot of people don't enjoy questing, so I'm going to keep this list very short. This is the most impactful quest series for PVM benefits. First of all, getting 150 quest points lets you unlock the Vanquisher weapon which is Tier 75 Hybrid. The second quest series is the Ancient Curses quest. Then after this you want to get Plyke's End because this gives you prep access and the Overload Combination Potions. The World Wakes and Dig site, well, I previously listed in the Unlockable Abilities. If you want, you can go for the Surgeon's Ring, which is unlocked by completing the Broken Home quests. You also have to complete the 37 minute challenge, so that's going to be a little bit hard for beginners. Now I did a video on the top 10 best quest unlocks, which outlines the essential quests even for non-PVM, if you want to check this out. Section number 4, the recommended stats. I know a lot of these stats seem pretty high, but trust me, it is well worth it. For one thing, you want to have 99 combat stats, because this means you can access every ability as demonstrated in my ability rotation guide. Nowadays, it seems like max combat is the standard for Jigex on how they balance each boss around. After this, you want to get at least 95 prayer, which are for the ancient curses. Turmoil will increase the damage, accuracy, and defense for the particular combat style, and then Soul Split will heal the amount of damage as you deal. However, Soul Split is used more for AFK situations, Slayer, 
or places where you can out DPS the amount of damage you take. And finally, the last essential stat you want to have is 96 Herblore. Overloads will boost combat stats by plus 17 constantly for 6 minutes long. Eventually, you'll turn these overload potions into combination variants, such as Holy, Supremes, Elders, Elder Selves, etc. You will also unlock Adrenaline Potions and Super Anti-Fires along the way, both of which are really good PVM potions. Look, I get that these stats are going to take a lot of time and money investment, but these are really key essential stats to get started. If you were new to bossing and you don't have these stats, you're going to have a much tougher time. When I told my friend that returned to this game to get these stats, you have no idea how much it helped him to improve his PVMing skills. Luckily for you, if you're struggling to train these skills, then I do have three guides for this, which I'll leave the links in the description. The fifth section I'll get into is the weapons and armor. Alright, bossing gear is becoming increasingly expensive, and even the tier 90 gear that's used for most bosses is absolutely overpriced and unaffordable for most beginners. For each combat style at bare minimum, you want to get at least tier 80 weapons and tier 70 power armor. Now these tier 80 plus weapons I list here will go for under 25 mil in today's GE price. Tier 70 God Wars Dungeon 1 armor is really nice for beginners because it's not degradable. Those who are new to this game might ask me, well Tony, why are you using power armor instead of tank armor? The reason being is because tank armor lacks the DPS, and even if you're learning, a lot of these deaths are because you took damage from mechanics, something that tank armor won't save you unless maybe you use acto armor from raids, I don't know, but either way, just learn with power armor, okay? I'll start with the beginner magic upgrades, and this is what I suggest. Staff of Limitless Air is a very affordable option at 7.1 mil in today's GE prices for all these ingredients combined. It also supplies unlimited air runes, which is really nice. Now although it requires 75 crafting, don't panic if you don't have that because you can ask someone to assist it for you by, you know, going to the GE or something like that. Then after this, we have the range upgrades, and in summary, I'm gonna suggest the following. Zerai Bow or Royal Crossbow for 2H, or for dual wield Shadow Glaive slash Chaotic Crossbows, plus the Armadale set for armor. If I were to choose one weapon out of the bunch, that would be Zerai Bow, because it has a low maintenance cost, and you only need to pay 8 mil for this, thankfully. Royal Crossbow ingredients are also cheap, but learning how to brandish Quinn Black Dragon can be a bit of a hassle for beginners. If however you don't have any problem going to QBD, then this would be a pretty good option for you. Since Chaotic Crossbows cost 300k Dungeoneering tokens, that will take a few hours worth of token farming. And finally, the last subsection we'll get into is the melee upgrades. The one and only 2H melee weapon I suggest is Masuda's War Spear. Then for a dual wield setup, you have a couple of options, but I would go with Blade of Avarice, as well as an offhand Elder Rune Longsword plus 5. And for armor, you would wear full bandos. These days, Masuda War Spear is really cheap to get, compared to Dragon Rider Lance or even the Noxious Scythe. The reason I suggest this and only this weapon is because Halberds have a range of 2 squares, which give you more wiggle room when you're milling bosses, as well as being good for Slayer and combat training. Dual wield weapons are even cheaper. However, here's the catch. Dual wield melee rotations tend to be a lot harder to learn than 2H. The next section is accessories for all combat styles. For the amulet slot, I would bring either a Blood Amulet of Fury or, if you cannot afford that, the Ceradomin Amulets. Blood Fury will heal a small amount of damage as well as damaging the boss slightly based on the amount you heal. However, Blood Fury is 22 mil, so if you cannot afford that, then you can go with the Ceradomin Amulets, which go for around under 1 million GP for each combat style. For the ring slot, I suggest either Ring of Vigor or Surgeon's Ring from Broken Home. Many PVMers like to use Ring of Vigor as a switch item rather than wearing it itself. In that case, Surgeon's Ring would be your primary ring to wear. If you don't like Switchscape however, then you can keep Vigor on at all times. For the Cape slot, I would suggest Kiln Cape, but if you can't do the Fight Kiln, then you can use any one of these combat capes as listed here, which you'll most likely unlock because like I said before, 99 combat stats is really essential. For the pocket slot, I suggest any inactive god book. Even if you don't want to spend god pages to charge them, 
it offers you a minor stat increase, although to be fair, Pocket's thoughts aren't vitally important for beginner bossing, so you can ignore this if you don't want to do the quest. And the final slot we have are the auras, and if you're new to bossing, then you don't have to worry about this. However, if you have a lot of spare marks of war for some reason, then you want to buy the Berserker auras. Each of these auras is going to take at least 25 hours to get. So this brings me to my next section, Utility Items. Many PVMers will carry switches in their inventory like Flanking, Planted Feet, Dreadnips, Bladed Dive Switch, Vaughn Bombs, etc. As shown on the slide, this is a sample inventory of one of my bossing presets. However, because this list is really complicated, here are the list of the most basic ones. First, we have Ring of Vigor, and that saves 10% Adrenaline whenever you activate an ultimate ability. You can buy this for 50k Dungeoneering Tokens. This is perhaps the most important switch. After this, we have Enhanced Excalibur, and you can activate this in your inventory every 5 minutes, which will heal 20% or 40% of your max HP every 20-40 seconds. Unfortunately, this requires you to do the Seer's Hard task at least, and the Elite task for the maximum effect, so it can be a little tedious if you don't like doing tasks. And then we have Guthic Staff, which is magic exclusive, and that is great for lowering the enemy's defense, plus being a decent special attack for magic. You can obtain this by playing the Mage Arena in the Wilderness. In order to unlock the special attack, you have to cast Divine Storm Auto Attack in the Mage Arena at least 100 times. The last thing on this list is a tier 70 shield switch for each combat style. Defensive abilities, while it's really difficult to learn at first, it can save you from a tough situation. Most notably, Resonance will heal one attack, and if that's a huge hit, that will save quite a bit of food. You can buy these tier 70 shields for under 5 mil each. Don't worry, I will do a full guide on how to use defensive abilities. If for whatever reason you're not a fan of Switchscape or you don't want to get these unlocks, then that's completely fine because it's not as high priority of unlock compared to others. Alright, so I'm gonna do demonstration with this gear. What I'll do is run through a sample Queen Black Dragon kill using only the unlocked abilities and gear that I've listed previously. Since I do have archaeology relics, I'm gonna disable them for this demo. Although I had footage for a successful Hellware kill, I struggled massively with the timing of the mechanics, so that is why I'm gonna use a QBD kill instead. Do note that I'm not using optimal strategies, because this is my first QBD kill in quite a long time. I also haven't used non-tier 90 weapons for bossing or even unaugmented gear since the beginning of the Bossing to Max Cash series. In the future when I make bossing guides, I'm most likely gonna use this setup, unless otherwise, there are better beginner unlocks to get. Normally, I would do the conclusion after the honorable mentions, but I'm gonna give you my overall thoughts on this gear. Obviously, when you get into high level bosses, you're gonna need more upgrades. It was really hard for me to compile this list, as not only did I want to make this comprehensive, but also reasonable to get. Although some of these unlocks look very absurd, bossing just requires a lot because otherwise you're gonna have a much tougher time learning, but yeah, we all have to start somewhere, right? Well, I am hoping to do a gear upgrading guide in the future, so stay tuned for this. The final section, the honorable mentions. These are the list of nice optional unlocks you can include as well, which help in the long term, but they're not super important for beginner bossing. I'll start with 96 summoning, and that unlocks Ripper Demons as well as Pack Gax. Ripper Demon is currently the best DPS familiar in the game. On the other hand, we have Pack Yak, which is really nice for storing more food. Don't get me wrong, summoning is really amazing and it's helpful for PVMers. However, it doesn't make the same immediate impact as others I listed above. You're also time limited on charms, as well as being somewhat expensive. It's also going to cost a lot to use per hour if you were to use combat familiars because Ripper Demon Scrolls don't come very cheap. Even Steel Titan is somewhat expensive. If you're learning a boss, a Ripper Demon DPS isn't going to help that much anyways. Not to mention that if you die a lot without Ring of Death, you're going to have to resummon these familiars. Even though Pakyaks offer great storage for food, War Tortoise at 18 inventory spaces isn't a bad alternative. I mean, if you have the money and the charms for 96 summoning, then go for it. However, I see a lot of beginners struggle to train this skill, so that is why it's not a very high priority thing. 
Next up, we have Invention, which requires 80 crafting, smithing, and divination. There are so many benefits of Invention, mostly PVM perks such as Precise, Equilibrium, Aftershock, Impatient, etc. On top of this, you have Invention Machines as well as Skilling perks. Despite all of this, I didn't list Invention as a high priority, and the biggest reason is because most of these good or even decent Invention perks or unlocks come at 120 Invention. Some perks can be really expensive to create, which can be a little unfeasible for beginners. Trust me, at the lower levels, the quality and chance of getting a good perk is pretty low. To be fair, most of these low-level bosses and possibly a Raxor next, you could do this without invention. Since it made the honorable mentions, I would at least unlock invention so that you can train it passively with combat or do bosses with that. After this, we have Archaeology, which is yet another skill that benefits in PVM. Most notably, you'll get Relics as well as unlocking Ancient Invention. However, the problem with Archaeology is that it's rather slow to train at the earlier levels, and these Relics come at higher levels. Still, this is worth noting nonetheless. And last but not least, we have the Hydrix Jewelry, which is Amulet of Souls and Ring of Death. They will cost 75 mil each, which is really expensive for beginners. For Amulet of Souls, it'll heal more damage off Soul Split and make Protection Prayer 60% effective rather than 50%. Then we have Ring of Death, and when you die, this becomes a safe death, which means you keep all items and familiars. However, it will cost 15% charge per activation. A lot of beginner bossing guides would suggest Amulet of Souls or even Ring of Death. However, this is because they used to only cost 25 mil a piece. I mean, if you have the money for this, then go ahead and buy that because it will definitely make bossing a bit easier, although I suggest you get the beginner bossing gear first. As for Ring of Death, these death costs aren't really high if you were to use the suggested beginner gear, and not to mention these onyxes are a little bit overpriced at this moment at like 4 mil each. Eventually, when your death costs become really expensive, then consider investing on an overcharged Ring of Death. So yeah, thanks for watching and I hope it helps. If I missed anything, feel free to ask. Also, be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already because I will do more PVM guides in the future.